Welcome. Um, I guess it's just me today. Uh, we're, this isn't quite part three. Let's change that. Three, part three. The faction turn. I did one of the faction turns off recording in between sessions uh, on my own time. And I thought this time I'll add a special something for those following along. So we are playing Blades in the Dark by John Harper. And we stream kind of around five or six Central Standard Time uh, on Twitch at Digital Dungeons. Uh, if you're listening to this, you're here at Digital Dungeons Archive on YouTube. Uh, give it a follow or go over to Twitch and give that a follow to watch live. Anyways, uh, so the faction turns kind of like a GM driven Turn. That's kind of, uh, kind of just kind of works, I guess. Let's say. Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the crew itself, they're a crew of hawkers, meaning that they go around selling illegal goods. They're known as the Princes of the Palace. The palace being a kind of medium-sized steam-powered paddle wheel or electroplasm-powered paddle wheel uh, that they uh, kind of list to the shores uh, and the docks and the wharfs of Silkshore, the neighborhood that is the, lead, le the Red Lamp District and known for selling all sorts of vice. Let's just take a look at the factions as they stand right now. So, if you're negative three, you're at war. If you're at plus three, you're definitely allies. Zero being neutral, and there's a sliding scale. So, uh, currently, our uh, intrepid scoundrels are under the employ of the Hive. Now, the Hive are a group of uh, merchants uh, that are kind of operating. They, you know, have their little secret pins of like gold B in their collar or under their collar. Up, uh, and they kind of operate various illicit uh, drug deals using kind of merchant trade as their cover. They're kind of more or less like a merchant's guild. Uh, so that's where it, where it is. The In the first episode, the uh, the princes uh, conducted a score against the Lamp Blacks, uh, raiding one of their vice dens and stealing uh, a bunch of drugs, a couple of crates of drugs. Uh, and um, just kind of destabilizing them a little bit. Uh, there was some medium exposure, and the Lamp Blacks are no longer friendly toward the uh, toward the princes. And of course, they're not going to seek out vengeance just yet. Um, but one more thing, they could potentially be pushed to vengeance. Uh, the Red Sashes, in the last episode, so episode, uh, or yeah, part two, or score two, um, the princes struck a deal uh, allowing them to sell their wares in the University of uh, Char Hollow. Uh, the, the kind of to the students and the kind of young nobles there that the Red Sashers are currently kind of running a racket where they're the security because they run a kind of sword sword school, but also run uh, drugs to the very people they're trying to protect. Uh, but they've managed to um, 
kind of assuaged their fears and because the the product that the princes sell it was so good the the red sashes let them in on their uh their turf as it were so the grinders and the bill hooks the grinders are a group of former uh, workers processing plants of great leviathans the leviathan kind of essence processing i believe let me look that up or I start spewing random nonsense. Oh yeah, so they're former dock workers, yeah, and and Leviathan blood refinery workers. They're violent, and they're friends <laughs> of the princes. The bill hooks, likewise, are also violent um they are tough gangs of preferred hatchets and meat hooks and pole arms so they're kind of very very violent and they are kind of more or less maybe uh, they're also in um the crow's foot and kind of coal ridge kind of areas uh, so the Wraiths are a kind of gentleman's cat burglary guild made up of thieves. Um, Tyler character, uh, Charnel, uh, is a former member and that's why they have bad blood. There was a deal to steal a boat and Charnel and uh, Charnel's friend, uh, who, a former killer, Mercy, uh, they took the boat and turned coat. Uh, they kind of backstabbed the wraiths and uh, tried to start up on their own. The, you know, the wraiths are a little, were a little too in the shadows for their liking. They wanted to be a bit uh, more violent in the kind of things they did. Now, Ulf Ironborn is a uh, a, a leader of trying to get a gang started um, and he's, you know, he's attracted a few members um, but he's a brutal Skovlander newly arrived in the dusk uh, fighting everyone for turf trying to carve out a gang territory uh Kind of near the docks, but also Bull Ridge. I really just trying to uh, fight everybody. He's made some citizens of Coleridge quite angry with his kind of activities there, because uh, he's not from there, and Coleridge more of a tight knit place. Um, and of course. The blue coats kind of have a negative relationship. They interfere with everything. They are the fuzz. Uh, they are the enemies of scoundrels. Prime. Of course, they are also crooked as as any other gang in the city or or institution. They just as bad. Uh, so each of these places, they they have uh, wants. Uh, represented by their box. Now they, when I roll their tier, fill in some section of the clocks. So on a on six, I'll fill in three. Uh, on a four, five, I'll fill in two. And on one, two, three, I'll fill in a single segment of the clocks. Uh, to see what they want. So let's roll the wraiths. The wraiths are a tier two, and they want to uh, secure an arcane ally of some sort, possibly in battling their former uh, at the loss of 
Charnel Cuvier, who could have dealt with ghosts, uh, and they lost their uh, assassin also. So they're probably looking for someone strong, someone tough, someone they can, uh, someone that they can pledge fealty to them, or at least ally with. Let's see what happens here. Four. So that's uh, two segments. Getting them halfway to see an arcane ally. Perhaps they're meeting it uh, out with people and trying to discern who would be uh, kind of loyal or loyal enough if they know what they're about. So the grinders is that small gang who wants to steal a boat. Uh, they're the um, former dock workers and they want their share. Six, that's three segments. Boom, they are now halfway to stealing a warship, a massive Leviathan hunting beast of a ship <clears throat> that goes out and uh, hunts these demons of the Void Sea. Uh, so the Blue Coats want to, as any police officer group wants, they want to uh, militarize. Uh, so let's see if the Blue Coats militarize. Three, so that is just a single tick. They're slightly over halfway. Made some progress before, perhaps meeting with some arms dealers from Aruvia. But there's some hold up, maybe some bureaucracy. Some concerns. Uh, the nobles think that uh, arming them might might not be the best idea, but we'll see how it goes. Now the Circle of Flame wants to acquire all the ancient artifacts of Qatar. Let's see what they want. So the Circle of Flame is a fringe, I believe. No. Bottoms reconciled, scholar in are they an institution? Oh, the Circle of Flame are an underworld. Yes, yes. The Circle of Flame are a group of kind of secret cult organization bent on uh, kind of reviving and or controlling these like artifacts in the hopes of like bringing back uh, demons to their service or for they could serve the demons too uh, and they want they want to collect the, the artifacts of Qatar let's see how they've they did on six they've made quite progress that's three ticks they're almost they're three quarters of the way that's pretty good that is almost all the way to there and I can't wait for them to acquire that and see what that does to the world. Uh, so the, if the gondoliers, uh, so the gondoliers are kind of like more or less, let's say, um, just tough individuals. They ride the boats. Uh, they have some knowledge of the spirits because people dump bodies into the, the moats and they have to deal with the spirits that, that kind of trudge out. Um, and also when there's no cops in like the watery areas, think kind of Italy or um, think kind of what like with the watery streets of parts of uh, Amsterdam. Uh, so where some streets are completely just waters and you have to use boats and gondoliers to get through. Um, so they are the kind of like lease of those areas uh, so both the blue coats and the spear wardens don't like them uh, but the citizens do so if they have any like spirit troubles they'll often go to the gondoliers first the gondoliers are a year three 
action. So they get three dice in order to investigate this, uh, these hollows. So these like people who don't have souls that are like popping up so that it's three marked. Um, it's people whose souls have been ripped out of their bodies. Um, and can be restored because their souls weren't away and their bodies are now like more or less like zombified husks of their form. So the Lamp Blacks want to destroy the Red Sashes. They are blocked in a bitter war between the Red Sashes and the Red Sashes want to destroy the Lamp Blacks. They're both here two gangs. Be cold. Uh, we'll do the Lamp Blacks first, then we'll do the Red Sashes. Of course, the Lamp Blacks are the ones who are kind of arrayed against uh, the team, or the team, but the gang of uh, hawkers. So there's uh, two ticks, and now the red sashes, who they kind of are now allied with. Let's see what happens here. Five, another two ticks for them. So without outside intervening, uh, it looks like the Lamp Blacks might destroy the Red Sashes first. So they're going to look for help and they're going to maybe call on uh, call on the, 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 the group to try help them. See if we can embroil them in, in conflict. Uh, so we do the Hive. The Hive was the uh, merchant guild and they, they kind of controlled the Silk Shore and its vices and the, uh, the princes pay a tith to the Hive in order for them to be able to allow to be operating in the Silk Shore and able to sell their wares. Let's roll for the Hive. They are tier 4 and they want to commit an assassination. Of course, uh, fill up. Boom, I accidentally rolled it twice, maybe, or a bunch of dice. Fills up, and the hive hires an assassin to uh, kill a member of the crows. So the crows want to establish control of Crowfoot. Uh, re-established because they had it but they're second in command the first in command got killed by the second in command now the second in command also got killed so they're uh, in trouble and I'm gonna give them a penalty on this that this year to try to establish control because they are having trouble but not too much trouble it like they yet X Now the bill hooks want to terrorize a bunch of magistrates and pardon their members. Uh, so let's roll the bill hooks. Well, the violent hatchet man. Rolling a three, so single tick. Uh, and Ulf Ironborn wants to get air torque. He wants to grow single eye. on slowly see what they want um, that's all I have for currently um, the gangs gangs all have allies and are multiple allies so we'll see what happens when there's starts being um, an action happen uh, we'll see if uh, the crows are the crows will want some some answers so we'll see if they can ask they're gonna ask uh, around see who knows probably the red sashes would know it's an, a contract and some other people know that uh, well, who the contract was for the people in the like the world of killing for hire kind of knows who contract was given by 
uh, if you follow the leads. But uh, we'll see if uh, comes with it. Uh, so that was the faction turn. Um, just rolled some dice, advanced some blocks, and we will see how this plays out. Because um, the assassination of Roderick was a potential hook that I, I dangled in front of the players. Um, but now someone accomplished it and it's going to throw maybe a wrench uh, or maybe an opportunity in the crow's foot uh, area or the crow's, is the crow's nest. The, the neighborhood, the central neighborhood where all the crime is. Crow's foot, yeah. Kind of named after um, after like this, this tower that also the crows uh, took their name from. A central tower in there. We will see. So check us out next time we play Blades in the Dark. Um, of course, we will um, love to have you in the chat, which, uh, or comment on YouTube. All right. Until next time. Bye.